Yeah, so he's just figured out how to jump the fence anytime he wants now. So I put him in there. I'll have to figure out what's next. Tiago called me. He was over there this morning. so He was over there? Mm -hmm. And he jumped it last night before we left. While we were here. And right while we were here and it was With closed. the ice method, okay, that's, that's this way of identifying uh, trauma that's in our life and actually uh, removing those upsets such that they don't they don't bother us we're not triggered by them they're not reference points for us anymore and that's <clears throat> that's my work that's my professional work it's what I develop it's what I'm interested in and um, as I was doing that I reached this place where uh, it that sort of more mechanical piece of the journey became more of a spiritual journey um, and it was about um, becoming non-attached and non-reactive as those traumas were reconsolidated. And I ended up spending probably a year just in this place of like, well, what then? And what do you do with these fears about, like, if you lose your house or you lose your job or you end up homeless and ending up in a pretty calm place about all of that. And uh, for the last dozen years or so, we've grown most of all of the food we eat and got a couple chickens mostly for the garden uh, but also for the eggs but mostly for the soil and, and the shape of the garden um, and my actual commitment out of having these chickens was like how do I have chickens out of a non-reactive non-attached calm way of being then um, we thought well it'd be nice to have 200 chickens maybe we could sell them to some friends or something like that and then we found out that the other people that were providing local eggs, they were stopping uh, doing that. And so then it was like, well, do we want to do that? And we decided we wanted to do that. And the backdrop to all of this is like, how would I enter into something that's like this real physical, material, living thing, but do it from this spiritual place of calm, of understanding that everything is already part of infinity and source and God space, whatever you want to call it. But, uh, you know, to, to be doing this out of this non-reactive place. And so even though I'm feeding chickens every day, I'm going getting food, delivering eggs, doing all that stuff, the backdrop of this whole thing is, is very much a spiritual journey um, in, in combining this awareness of non-attachment, non-reactive, infinity, source, uh, with chicken poop and eggs and chicken food. So now as we move to 3,000 chickens, the continuing adventure becomes how to do this in the awareness that you know, this little thing is still part of infinity. That's the story of me and the happy hens. Me trying to be a happy Lars with keeping the happy hens happy. <laughs> it seems to fold into you know, uh, everything that you've always been a, it's nice to been a from part of. Because in, in my sense, um, the, the ride straight into Gay America, you helped me with the book, uh, there, was, there was an anger there in me about injustice. And well, uh, my life has, um, that's been really a driving force in my life to seek justice. Yeah. But the reactivity in it was out of this anger about the injustice. What's going on uh, with uh, the chicken farm and uh, uh, your your journey from from uh, Capitol Hill in Seattle to Chelan. What got you here? Yeah. So what got me here was uh, I have had PTSD for the last two years. Okay. And I was talking to a friend of mine one day, and she said, "I know this guy who has this technique that helps your body be calm no matter what your mind is doing." Mm. And I thought. Well, that sounds like something I need because mm. <laughs> my body is not calm. Mm. So I called up Lars and we had a conversation over the phone and I was intrigued by his method. So I came out to visit for a week and hung out with him with the chickens. Mm. Okay. And we played with his method and used it to help soothe my PTSD. Okay. And I fell in love with the chickens and his ice method. So okay. I came yeah. back. <laughs> Yeah. It's interesting to think about PTSD or moral injury in terms of the planet as well. Mm -hmm. uh, healing the, healing this, this planet. Uh, I have never put those words together and that's why you're here. You should flip Oh, yeah. 
Oh, look at that. Did you get them? Uh, kind of. Kind of. Yeah. Uh, slow. One should, one can almost only ever kind of get a quail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do you tell your story? At where you're at now? Hmm. Um, oh, that's such a good question. Well, where I'm at now is um, I'm increasingly calm. I was just reflecting yesterday on how a year ago, not even that, several months ago, I was having panic attacks and. Okay. And, uh,. I felt like a trapped animal must feel when uh, a predator is after it, even when nothing was happening. Like I would be completely safe in my living room with people I care about and feel totally threatened and terrified. Uh, and that doesn't happen anymore. Uh, um, a lot of the time, and when I'm not, I have the tools to get calm. Okay. Or I come up to the chicken farm with Lars if I'm stuck on a particular topic and we ice. Uh, um, so now I'm getting kind of restless and like ready to do something with my time because for a while my focus was very much on healing. So I'm helping Lars with the Kickstarter to get his chicken farm off the ground and practicing staying calm even when I'm moving towards a goal because mm -hmm. I'm noticing lots of things come up as I start to take actions, mm -hmm. like concerns that I won't be effective or... Mm -hmm. Will I ever be able to create a life that I really want, how I want it to look, and mm. all the past failures have come pounding into my head as I start to move forward on this with Lars. Mm. So we're working through that stuff too. Okay. It's good. I'm excited. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Mm. So this is another reason that we're going to really need a tractor here, um, just to do the work okay. that's on this place. And I think uh, when interns come, it'll be a really inspiring place to be. Yeah. Uh, right here. And we're right on the edge of the wild, so that whole thing about um, hunting, gathering, agriculture, mm -hmm. the wild, the develop. You go out, you know, all the way from Highway 90 where you started this morning, mm -hmm. and you end up on the edge of the wild. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. Well, when I was talking about. Uh, David Hinton earlier. Yes. He says every gesture in the poem is wild. Oh, that's nice. Every gesture. Hmm. I knew this was going to be a good day with you being uh -huh. here, so thank you very much. Yeah. When did I first know that? Probably five years ago. When? Five years? Five years? I think. I've known, I've, I really want to own property. I want a retreat center. Okay. Where people can come and okay. um, reconnect to nature and the outdoors. And this is part of what I want to do is a farm where all they right. can get their hands dirty. And well, you get it. So the, all of the holistic pieces are here then, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the emotional side, the outdoors, the yeah. deep conversation over campfires. And there you go. Yes. I think the blue ones... The blue one's the Icelandic. There's an Icelandic yeah. breed of chickens here. <laughs> I wonder what they're thinking. So this, this is a predator loss, and our dog ran away last night, jumped the fence, and this actually is an owl. And owls come and they just eat the head off of a bird. That's all, for some, I don't know why, but, so this was an owl death, wow. predator death, yeah. Wow. And um, that's just something you gotta deal with. It's why it's so important to have a dog or so useful. Typically, if there's a dog around that doesn't bother the chickens, um, you don't have any predator deaths from coyotes, hawks, or owls. Okay. <laughs> all right. So earlier today we fed these chickens all the food, and we talked about how a chicken eats like 500 calories a day, 
and like four chickens is the same as a person. So really with these 500 chickens out here every day, we're collecting enough food to feed 125 people. Wow. When you think about it, that's food that doesn't have to be grown out in the field, doesn't have to be taken to a feed store and bagged up. That's what we're collecting. And the reason that I wanted to say that is because the other part of the day is I get to be the dishwasher. So, you know, wash all these buckets up and get them ready for, for the next day. So in the morning, I'm the collector, then I become, then I become the cook, and at the end of the day, I'm the dishwasher. Okay. That's all I wanted you to know. Okay, thank is, you. That's dishwashing good. is a central part of every good job. All right. Well, there's several things. One, I've wanted a piece of property of my own for forever, and this provides the opportunity to start a property in a way that is fundable right off the bat, like where I know income's coming in while I build all the other pieces, the retreat center, the healing pieces. Um, also, I love that it takes care of food waste. Mm -hmm. A friend has been educating me for years on how much food we throw away, so I love that it becomes compost and food for chickens, which is just this lovely cycle of... Um, and it feeds you. Yeah. Oh, and I love fresh, like, homegrown chicken eggs are the best. So that's, yeah. like, just the... So, I, I'm really struck by what you said about moral injury and kind of your work with PTSD and this idea that moral injury is we get involved in things that go against our conscience, is, is my understanding mm -hmm. of it. So, PTSD comes out of a war situation or a trauma situation, but for the person in the war who's doing things that are against our moral consciousness. Against the values. And it's like, gosh, that is so... It, I, I can articulate this in terms of what we're saving, what we're doing for the environment, all those kinds of things. But there is this sort of brokenness, this moral injury, this this deep sense of like, like it really shouldn't be that I could collect this many buckets of food <laughs> plus all those boxes we got this morning just from our little town of 4,000 people that's thrown away mm. that every single day I bring up here enough food to feed 125 people. And pop tarts, right? Yeah. What is this? It's fresh vegetables, fresh fruits, all those kinds of things. More variety. But that is that's happening nationwide and globally every day. Unbelievable that it that it exists and it happens. And here's like a way just to not have that happen. To be able to take care of like this going and creating a product that creates a business for people's livelihood. Like moral injury, it's unbelievable that this opportunity exists, <laughs> that it's still here. So every day it feels really good to be able to come and do this, to make this happen. So in terms of the negative, yes, but in terms of the positive, mm -hmm. like to get to be involved in something that's an actual solution, have fun with these chickens, talk to them every day, watch them lay eggs, I'm pretty happy about that. Thanks. Yeah. But it's so nice just to be able to come out here and do the positive. Right? Yeah. Do the thing that is the solution. Enjoy the chickens. Look at that goose out there. I mean, that goose is going to honk all day, wander around in the night. Look at, we got a dog out here. You get to be involved in that. It's nature. You go for three days without eating. End of a day. So did you know chickens can't see at night? No. So they, they can't see at night. So if you need to move a chicken, you should wait till it gets dark. Um, so they're out here, and then pretty soon they'll all be over in front there. And then by later evening, they'll all be up on their roosts. And that light will go out about midnight, 11 o'clock or midnight. And then they'll have complete dark until the dawn comes. Mm-hmm. Just be nice when you can just at the end of the day walk thirty feet into your house. Yeah. <laughs>